everybody, it's Alexa. Have you ever wondered why touch is such an important part of the KonMari method? Well, I have an insight into why that is, and I have even some props to demonstrate a little bit of what I'm talking about. The important thing when you are decluttering is to, first of all, go by category, like uh, Marie Kondo advises, so starting with the easiest things and moving on to the hardest things and having large categories to really help you, first of all, get a head of steam, and second of all, to help you sort of see how much you have of a given type of item. That's, that's one thing that's so helpful about the categories. But then after that, she says, you know, you use your sense of touch and your intuition much more than you use, you know, questions of, of utility. Am I going to use this in half in six months or a year? You know, she really advises going 100% by intuition. And, and as she confesses in her books, you know, that sometimes leads to strange results where, you know, she declutters a pan and then discovers she or a hammer and then she discovers she's using a pan as a hammer. You know, and sometimes things like that can work out fine because we have too many specific sort of single use items now in our lives. The thing that I realized about touch is this. When people read her, her stuff about touch and saying thank you to the things that we declutter, a lot of times they feel like that is uh, animism and actually I think it is sort of animism um, and you know, talking about the vibrations that things have or the energy that they have seems absurd to people and sometimes even sacrilegious to certain people. Um, although if you, you know, realize it, everything at the molecular level is in fact moving and con con consists of energy. Um, and then whether or not you believe there's sort of some kind of psychic energy, um, certainly there is an energy cost to everything that we have especially these days, whether or not you believe there's energy in the objects, there is definitely a human need to touch things. And here's how I know. When you buy things, the first thing that you do is touch it. You go to a store, you see something in a window, you're like, oh, wow, look at that. You have to go in and what do you have to do first? You have to touch it. You have to feel it. What's the texture like? Is it hot? Is it cold? Is it rough? Is it smooth? Is it furry? You know, visual is a huge sense for us, but touch, I mean, it really is a big, big part of our relationship to objects is touch. And when, uh, you know, in the concept of putting it on our body and feel, oh, how does it feel? How does it make me feel? You know, I mean, even things like tags and stuff like that can really bother people. Um, and, and by the same token, we all know that we have clothes that we love how they look, you know, the color or the style or the brand or whatever, but we can't bear to wear them. And that's one of the great things to get rid of, right, is all those things that you think you should wear, but you just can't bear to wear them because they're so freaking uncomfortable. And I've had pants like that. Have you ever had pants where, like, the crotch, like, the rise is too short? Ugh. That is so uncomfortable. Like they weren't even that tight. It was just that in critical measure was wrong. And it was impossible to wear those pants. And of course we have tons of shoes that are uncomfortable. Now I'm getting a good sort assortment of shoes that are still, um, you know, a little bit sexy, but comfortable enough to walk around in and also not too sexy because um, for performing, I can have stilettos, but you know, some for certain business meetings and things like that, where I A, have to walk and B, have to have people focused on business. Um, you know, there's such thing as shoes that are too sexy. Uh, anyway, that was a little bit of a, of a sidetrack. But my point is, touching is huge for us, right? And so part of the process is learning to understand that we will get information from touch that we won't get just from looking at things or thinking about things. So I have some examples here. I have some props. This little guy, this is a sentimental item actually. Um, it says Port of Oakland on it and something that my dad, and you know, if you can see, it's a little wooden shipping container. Now, I don't know if they still have wooden shipping containers, but this is probably from the 80s or the 70s. And it's something from my dad when he worked at the Port of Oakland. And so I have, I think I have just one of these, but this is like, you know, it's kind of surprising. I wasn't going to tell you this, but I just realized as I look at this, this is a sentimental item and I'm not going to get rid of it. I can just tell you that right now. Um, now this is an interesting item. I was hiking somewhere and I found like a little sacred altar and inside the altar there was a little box and there was a note and the note said take something or leave something and this little 3D printed flower, it's actually a 3D printed 
um, rose was uh, in the box and I took it because I love red and I, I thought it was kind of cool but periodically I look at it and I think ah, I should get rid of that but I, I haven't yet now here's an item this is super cool but it does not work yeah it does not work so this gosh where did I get oh I remember where I got this I got this at a Grammy event these were little decorations on the tables and so they're fake uh, lava lamps and it had an LED in it and it glowed and changed colors and um, it doesn't work anymore I wish I were good enough with electronics where I could figure it out I actually did dismantle it and try to figure it out but you know I think this is where the one comes in one goes out rule comes into play because I just went to France to Paris and in Paris I did not think that I would be moved by the Eiffel Tower but the Eiffel Tower was amazing. And there's all these vendors around the base. And I didn't even climb the Eiffel Tower. I just looked at it. It was incredible. And they sell these little Eiffel Tower statues, actually of all different sizes. In fact, there's bigger ones. And I, I might like to get a bigger one now. You know, I always thought it was the biggest cliche in the world, you know, when I have a picture of the Eiffel Tower. Well, when you go see it, it's just now it's a memory for me. It was so beautiful. And um, all these um, vendors, Malian uh, vendors, are selling these guys at the base along with iPhone chargers and a couple other things so I bought one of these um, and I took it home well since now I have this this guy can go right so that's an example one in one out um, and and touching each of these does it give me information um, it helps me make the decision uh, more quickly now I lack one skill or awareness that Marie Kondo has, which is for kind of interesting. She sort of has this awareness of electrical things, which is something I'd never even conceived of, um, like the smell of them and the sense of them. I'm certainly not really that aware. Um, although maybe if I think about like my, for my eyesight, when I think about screens and being exposed to screens, maybe at that point. But um, as a, for sense of smell and touch, I must confess I don't identify electrical things well but she certainly feels them as a as a category of object I think that was kind of interesting um, but the point is when you touch things you're able to come to a decision and so you what you want to do is get to a point where you could able to do this quickly so I really advise if you haven't already you know finished continue to do your con Marie by category um, get through your whole house like I've said many many times in my videos it may take six months it may take three months you know it really depends on how much stuff you have but then when you're done you're gonna find this whole reset has happened in your mind and and the other thing you have to think when you pick up the object uh, ah and this is something I, I said in my video in Spanish and I want to remember to say it in English the next level that I of course have not completely achieved but the next level then is when you are shopping you know, before you even bring the item in to your house or spend life energy, you know, energy that you expended earning money, now you are going to exchange for an object. Well, when you hold that object, when you pick up that object, see if you can see that object's life flash before your eyes. What's it like a month from now, six months from now, a year from now? five years from now. Do you want to care for this object? Like I said, that's advanced and I'm not there yet um, for everything. Although, um, and I, I also think you have to be careful because don't use it as an excuse to not enjoy life. You know, I mean, I think that's the other danger with this minimalism thing, as with everything external, this concept of like, I will finally be free. I'll finally figure it all out. I will reject everything and, and that will make me happy. Or, you know, and that's just an externalizing, you know, concept. And, you know, it's like we can, we have to do this for ourselves. Nothing can make us feel um, this other way, at least not permanently. Um, so, you know, be careful if it's just a, an excuse for not enjoying life. You don't want it to be that. But if you do want the amazing feeling of being debt free, the amazing feeling of having your house just get, or your apartment or your room or whatever, your space just grows and grows and grows and grows. And before you know it, you realize, holy crap, I'm rich. I've got so much space. I didn't even realize how much I had. 
And that's the point we want to get at because I really do think we're living in an amazing time. And despite all the news to the contrary, I believe and I have read that in general, everybody's lifestyle, everybody's sta um, standard of living worldwide in many places, um, it's, 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 it's at a higher level than it's ever been before. Thanks to a lot of the technology, thanks to the communication that we have, and so and thanks to manufacturing and everything. So we have this we have this wonderful opportunity to live a certain way. And as I've said in other videos, I'm not convinced that some of the digital nomad stuff and some of the minimalism stuff isn't just because of the fact that we're able to have all of our clutter up in the cloud or on digital formats. So we're confident that that uh, we haven't lost anything. We're still sort of accumulating just in a different way. So I think that that's very possible. That that's part of the reason why this kind of movement is possible. Is is, is possible and the other explanation I have is that um, we, uh, we we are in a, such an age of abundance that uh, having a lot of stuff um, isn't a sign of wealth um, or happiness anymore because anybody can achieve it so then you know we go the other direction and go well, look at me I can I can have almost nothing and be peaceful and calm anyway those are those are tangents I've addressed many of those concepts in other videos but I hope this helps and I hope the concept of holding it in your hand and asking yourself, does this give me joy? Does this make me happy? And just going with the feeling. Hopefully that will help you move quicker and identify the emotions that the object sparks and just make a quick decision and move on. So was this helpful? And do you find touching things helps you declutter? Let me know. And thanks for watching, commenting, and subscribing. Bye.